What's crack, big dopes? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. As always, we are joined by Dr. Jesse Morse of The Fantasy Doctor. Sometimes we swap between Thursday and Fridays, depending on the schedule earlier on in the week. But it's usually better when we get it on Friday because we're closer to game day. We know a lot more about the injuries because each day counts, obviously, on being a six-day break in between the games. We're talking week 11 fantasy football, all the top injuries, the most – uh, common guys that we see come up in our mentions and things like that. Anyone related to your fantasy team, we're going to dive into, break down, tell you whether or not you can trust them, tell you whether or not we should be concerned long-term about these dudes. And I'm uh, I'm ready to dive in. Dr. Morse, thank you for joining me today. I know you said you got a busy clientele over there down in Florida. Uh, how you doing? Yeah, holding down a fort for all these old people. I had a, long, a lot of young people today, too. People have been breaking stuff. Yeah, I know you were saying right before this how a lot of people kind of flock down there during the winter. Oh, my snowbirds. Yeah, my grandparents do the same thing. They grew up in, in Brooklyn. They lived there their whole lives. But now they start, you know, going to Florida oh, oh, yeah. longer and longer. It started with like seven months. Now it's eight, nine, yeah. ten. Now they're yeah. down there almost permanently. And my yeah, my grand my grandpa's had his, his knees replaced, his hips done. He's, he's everything you could possibly imagine. Yeah, they're bionic. That's yeah. what they are. And I'm the one who sees them all. The uh, – so I don't, how's the weather up there? Oh, it's horrible. Winter hit hard. It's, it's like, what's the temperatures? Uh, I'd say today was probably around 40 and that's like a good day this week. Yeah. My dad texted me the other day. He's in Massachusetts. He said 22. He said, you miss it. <laughs> yeah. It's said, been no. sub 40 all week and it's been miserable. You know, it's funny because like summer comes and you know, it's like the dog days and you're sweating and you're like, oh, I'm kind of excited for winter. And I like winter, you know, I like, <laughs> you know, dressing up and like layers and stuff. But like that first day hits and you're like, never mind. I, fucking yeah, I, I don't I, like then, winter anymore. Then you go back to my life. That's why I live here. Yeah, it was 82 today. Somewhere on there. Must so it's nice. like, I mean, it's, it gets dark early. I mean, it'll be dark in about an hour, but it's, and it's, it's like dark right now. Yeah. That's why my lighting is so terrible. Like I can't yeah. 430 videos don't work anymore because there's no lighting. Yeah. Here. Like, or that's why I'm like red and shit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully when I retire, I can make my way down there. And a way that y'all can help me retire is by hitting thumbs up on this video. If you like it, if you like it tell YouTube that it's good and they show it to a million people. And we all can retire and go down to Florida together. Yeah. Let's talk some injuries. Let's talk some injuries. All right. Now, Matt Stafford came mm. into the league as someone that was very injury prone. Or, you know, a lot of people were saying that after the first couple of years or whatever. Now, we have seen – Matt Stafford deal with this back injury. He popped up, kind of, I mean, not out of nowhere. We knew he was, like, dealing with something minor. Then all of a sudden, they were like, he's not going to play. He wanted to play. The, the team obviously said this is more serious than what you're taking it to be. We're going to keep you out of this game. And now he's not practicing at all this week. The back and the spine and whatever is obviously a very um, important piece of the body and will manage how the rest of your body works. And, it's you know, you could probably mess around with it and do damage very, very quickly to it. My concern with Stafford is like, one, I don't really even know what the fuck's going on, so you're going to break it down for us. But he dealt with this injury last year or something mm -hmm. similar to it with his back. And we saw – we're going to put the splits up on the screen. Over the last four games of the season, his pass attempts, his yardage, his – you know, just production overall was awful. You couldn't use him in any sort of capacity fantasy-wise. It was a big reason that we liked him going into this year because people were down on him based on, you know, how it brought him down at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. He was doing so well this year, and now he's dealing with this back thing. And I'm worried that over the next, you know, six weeks or whatever, this back injury is really going to kill his fantasy production. What do we know about this whole this whole back situation and how it's going to affect him on the field? We know that there are fractures. There are essentially two fractures that he could have. One is called a transverse process fracture. That is the most common type of fracture for this type of injury. For this type of athlete, Derek Carr had it. Tony Romo had it. Not life changing obviously uh he's still walking but here's the problem so when you look at this the back of the spinal uh, cord if you look at the vertebrae uh the vertebrae have uh, a, a a piece of bone coming off each side what happens is one or both of those break off so not a huge deal because the spinal cord's way back here you're not worried about that but these are attached to your back muscles so whenever you rotate the bone that's supposed to be there holding it is now moving with you which is very painful. So these take at least a couple of weeks to calm down. I was talking to my back surgeon about this yesterday. He said the only thing that could be happening that is concerning is what we call a compression fracture. So think of taking a bone and going, smush it in half. He said, if that's the case, he's probably not going to play again this year. We don't know which of the two it is. They haven't confirmed it. Uh, my suspicion is it's a transverse process. I think he comes back in a couple of weeks. 
but he's not going to be the same the rest of the year. Okay. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm pretty comfortable saying that. Now, does the, the does the discrepancy between him wanting to play and the team like, uh, you know, shutting him down mean anything to you? Because, like you said, uh, if it was the the latter, the second choice that you said, if if that was it, he'd be done for the year. Is that something that he'd be in so much pain with that he'd be like, I can't even go out there? But him telling uh, you, that um, yes, but it's also both of these are a pain tolerance thing. The transverse process fracture is more stable, so you're not really worried. The compression fracture can cause some serious issues if you don't address it. Okay. So, like if you don't, if you let him play. So, um, if it's a transverse process, it's a pain tolerance thing, which was probably why he. If if I had to bet money on it, I'd say transverse process. That's part of the issue is that even if he's out there, how much of a hundred percent is he? You know, and, and everything you do on the field, everything you do in life requires your back. Twisting, turning, pulling, pushing, everything. You know, imagine trying to get out of the way of a 300-pound sacker. I mean, you're going to take a hit to the back. It's, it's inevitable. So that's why every him and everybody on the team affiliated with him indirectly with pass catching or rushing yeah, is going to take a hit. I mean, yeah. Galladay got lucky. Marvin Jones didn't do anything. Haw- Hawkinson didn't do anything. Amendola didn't do anything. So it's like this entire team just takes a nosedive when Stafford's not in there. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm, uh, you got to be down on the Lions going forward. It sucks because it was, you know, Galladay started getting hot and it looked like he was going to be you know, top five, top eight option second half of the year. He did get that lucky touchdown in the fourth quarter where it was a bomb to him, but you can't expect that type of production week in, week out. And they have this dude, Jeff Driscoll, back. Yeah. One of my super flex dynasty leagues where you don't have quarterbacks on the waiver wire. I threw the rest of my fab down on him because I had Jacoby Brissett, I had uh, Russell Wilson on a bye, and like the quarterback options are tough to come by. I was pumped up that I got Jeff Driscoll in my uh, – Make it 10 on, points, but you're better than nothing. Yeah, exactly, on the wire. He's a guy – I mean, obviously he's not going to be – he's not going to, uh, you know, tear the lights out with his passing, but he's a dude who ran a four five six forty. That's faster than, like, Josh Jacobs. So the guy can run. Maybe he'll get you some rushing touchdowns. Maybe he'll get you some rushing yardage, whatever. Not going to feel comfortable throwing into my lineup. It's the Cowboys. They're, I would say, an above-average pass defense. They haven't been elite or anything, but still – not anyone you want to throw into your lineup. If you are in a super flex league, though, this uh, who knows? Maybe they do shut Stafford down if they take a couple more L's and just let Driscoll run it for the rest of the year. So something to keep an eye on. But Jacoby Brissett, on the contrary, has been back at practice. He is in a uh, full capacity. They said if he was practicing in full on Wednesday, he'd be playing. And that is the case thus far. They said he's going to be playing. My only question is, do we shy away from Brissett? Because he's, he's played like fairly well, you know, up to this point in, in the year. And you've been able to use him in your fantasy lineup. It is a tougher matchup against Jacksonville. They've been a little bit better over the last month and a month and a half defensive wise. Um, are you concerned about Jacoby Brissett being limited on the field because of this knee? Because, you know, he is, I'm not going to say he's a mobile quarterback, but he definitely uses that part of his game to his advantage. Yeah. So he's not going to be as mobile. Think of, Mahomes with his ankle he can throw the ball he just won't have that lateral mobility that's what the MCL does um that he wants to have so he's not going to be rushing he's not going to be escape the pocket so he's going to take some if if the pocket's collapsing he's going to take that he's just going to go down okay Uh, because he's not going to be able to have the agility to escape or if he does he may injure him may, may be done for the game so it may be in his best decision just to go down uh, because in that way, you probably minimize risk. So we're probably looking at him as more of a top 15 to 18 yeah. option than an actual QB1. Yeah, I mean, he's more of your, your mid to level two at this point. This is an important game. Uh, I, I'm sure if he if he wanted to play last week, he probably could have. But I thought know, he was they yeah. probably should have because obviously we saw they just they stunk up the joint and we saw how much of a cliff there was between him and, and, and Hoyer. Yeah, it, was, uh, it wasn't pretty for, for those that, you know, got cute and threw Hoyer into the lineups. I know a couple of people messaged me telling me that they were going to do that. And I tried to advise them against it, but they went ahead, did their thing. And that's what you get. I, I wouldn't suggest starting Jacoby Brissett unless obviously you need to, I have a, a few super flex leagues in which I'm going to have to, but you know, you could probably have some worse options. We'll move Look, over to the running back. position. A little bit of uh, breaking news. Uh, Antonio Callaway was just suspended 10 games. Oh, he was, re- he was released by the Browns. That's why. That's why. Yeah, okay. uh, substance abuse. Whatever. I mean, we knew uh, he had a lot of off-the-field issues coming into, into the NFL. And your boy Kaepernick um, had 11 confirmed attendees. Yeah, Hugh so Jackson the Falcons was, were one of them. Hugh Jackson was the, the guy running the show. 
Yeah, I saw a lot of funny tweets <laughs> about that. But, uh, yeah, let's move over to the running backs. We have Matt Breida, who is just – his ankle injuries are everlasting. They are immortal. They will never go away. So it seems like at this point when he pops up on the injury report with an ankle issue, you're like, okay, this is just common knowledge at this point. Um, but it seems like this one might be a little bit more serious because he is probably not going to play. He hasn't, he hasn't practiced at all this week. I don't know if they've actually officially ruled him out yet, but I'm expecting him to be ruled out. Um, it was a lower ankle sprain. I know from we've talked before about this, they're not as serious as the higher ankle sprains, but does re-aggravating it like a hamstring usually keeps you out even a longer period? Does re-aggravating um, it worse? Yeah, I mean, once you suffer a low ankle sprain, your ankle ligaments will never be the same. They they don't they don't heal. Matt, they Matt Breida out here proving that a hundred percent. They they scar like they don't heal. So when you re-roll it, you re-injure it again. The issue with these is that he's going to continue to dilly dally like he did last year. He's yep. going to try to play injured. He's not going to be very good. He's going to re-injure it. So it's like. They have to protect him from him. We saw last year when he was on the field and healthy, he was a beast. Yeah. He always, he got injured with like every freaking week. It was annoying. <laughs> and I like his talent. I just, he, he can't stay healthy. You saw how much they use him. Mustard was in overtime with a great game. Um, and that was why he was in there because Brita was injured. Yeah. It, I really like Mustard. I, I would suggest anyone that owns. Breeder, or anyone that needs a running back or a flex play, I would throw Mostert in there and be pretty confident about it because he's an explosive playmaker. Um, he's going to get double-digit touches, and they're going against the Cardinals, so that touch floor might even be a little bit higher if things get out of hand. They don't want to use Coleman 20, 30 times. They don't. No. They're, they're giving him like 15 to 20 touches at the most. Yep. They want to do a committee, so he's going to get touches. Yep. I have, I'd be very surprised if Breeder was active. I think they're finally going to – say or he needs to be shut down for a couple of weeks and i think this is probably a grade two if this is a grade one we wouldn't have heard about it so he's going to be out a couple of weeks until this thing responds like he wants it to yeah i think anytime you hear frida in the same sentence as you know missing the game you got to be a little bit concerned as an owner because he's a tough dude that usually plays through that stuff but about the freeman will not be playing through his foot sprain or whatever he's going through he left last week's game Ryan Hill comes in, gets 20 carries. 20 carries for an Atlanta Falcons running back. First time since 2017 that has happened in a game. Ryan Hill quickly became the number one waiver wire pickup this week. A dude with size, 6'1", 220, got NFL speed. He can catch the ball. He can play on all three downs. He's going to be a workhorse this week, um, possibly weeks moving forward. What do we know about this Devonta Freeman foot sprain? Are foot sprains something that, like, lingers? He just need – two, three, four weeks. Like how long could we expect him to be out for? I'm going to refresh you guys' memory. What did Cam Newton have in the preseason? Liz Frank. He had a foot sprain. Foot sprain. The other word for foot sprain? Liz Frank. That's All what right. they are. That, All that, right, that, that's what it is. It's a, I don't care. What, if you fr sprain your foot, that is the ligaments in the middle of the foot. Those are also called the Liz Frank ligaments. So – Unless they're trying to say he's got a tendonitis, which is rare and random. I mean, I see him a lot. I saw two this today, but they're not not for this type of athlete. Like this, that's not what he's dealing with. If it's a turf toe, call it a turf toe. Don't call it a foot sprain. Either way, he's going to be out a couple weeks. Yeah, he's not a spring chicken anymore. He's got a lot of miles on his on his tires. It's going to take time for him to heal. Brian Hill. I, it's funny because I this came back and I just started laughing when this happened. Because, first of all, I've always been down in Devonta Freeman. If anybody read my initial stuff in the preseason, I, he, I had him in, like, the 40th. Like, he was so yeah. friggin' buried, you would yeah, never I draft him. him anywhere either. If you, if you were all listening to me. Um, and then on Thursday, when they, whenever they put Edo Smith to IR. I picked I up Brian Hill every Wednesday. Day. And I, was, I tweeted out, I said, pick up Brian Hill because Devonta Freeman can never stay healthy or something like that. I think it was Thursday or Friday. And then all of a sudden this happens. I'm like, what a weird situation. A, they gave him a ton of touches, and that had to do with game flow or whatever uh, and, and trying to keep the ball away. But the, he has a smash spot this week. Yep. Um, ride him. He's going to be probably the highest owned running back in DFS this weekend. For sure. I mean, if he's not, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised because his yeah, match has to be. He definitely is going to be. And his price is fantastic. Yep. Real quick, I want to touch on uh, Geo. 
So I'm not sure how much you've looked into Gio Bernard's injury, but the only reason that this is not concerning per se, but for mixing owners, you know, this might be a little, little uh, sunshine ray of hope there because he's been so bad if you invested early capital into him. If Gio is out, right, these two running backs are the only two running backs in Cincinnati that even have a touch in this backfield on the entire year. So we'll probably see some sort of a split like uh, how Mixon has been or Mixon got on Sunday where he's got 32 touches. I feel like he's going to get 25 to 30 for the remainder of the games going forward if Gio mixes, misses time. So uh, what do you know about Gio? I know they said that, that it wasn't supposed to be a serious injury and so, he missed a lot of time. but the, He left the game with a knee sprain. Mm-hmm. By yesterday, Wednesday, he wasn't even on the injury report. So whatever they were concerned about got alleviated very quickly. Okay. Um, it sounds like he's going to play. I mean, what? Uh, Mixon had what thirty touches or some crazy number. Yep. Um, I uh, Red Rocket's not coming back. I mean, I don't expect him to. This team is awful. I mean, they're awful in every sense of the term, regardless of their uh, of their record. Like they're just. Yeah. Bad. I mean, I only I only brought it up just because it's it makes Mixon yeah. a little bit more oh, yeah. palatable. But I just yeah. don't know if I trust him. Yeah, I mean, Geo's off Geo's off the injury report, so I guess he should be playing. Let's move over to the wide receiver position because things got a little bit interesting here this week in terms of injuries. We had Emmanuel Sanders, who has been absolutely dynamite for the 49ers since getting mm-hmm. traded over there. He leaves the game with these rib injuries, and he has not practiced this week. He didn't practice Wednesday. He didn't practice Thursday. Neither has his teammate, George Kittle. Sanders might suit up. I feel like the ribs are kind of like a pain tolerance thing for the most part, so it's like maybe get an injection, maybe tough it out and play through it. It might be a little less effective. Your thoughts on Sanders having not practiced at all? Do you, you assume that he might just not practice and then play, or you don't think he'll suit up? So, first of all, they really missed him in this game, this past oh, yeah. game. If he played the remainder of the game, they win that game. I really oh, feel yeah. that way. There was guys dropping balls left and right. I'm like, you got to be – he hit you in the hands. It's insane when you watch oh. the team. Like, once Sanders came over there, you were like, wow, Jimmy G looks like a good NFL quarterback. And it was because Sanders was making all these plays for him. And he when he's off the field, it's like everyone is a full level beneath Emmanuel Sanders. Like, Debo is, is, has, has beast potential, but, my God, the rest of them are pretty bad. Yeah, Debo's so, going to be as shit this week. So here's the problem. They thought he broke his ribs. Got x-rays that were negative. He had to get an MRI. MRI likely showed cartilage damage, which is in between each rib is cartilage, and that's where the nerves run. This is a very painful injury. The main reason why is because the ribs are there to protect the lung. So when your lung fills up, your ribs expand. Well, the problem is when your ribs expand, that cartilage stretches and it hurts. So you can put a block in there, a, 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 a little local block, but you got to be careful. I mean, you can puncture a lung if you don't do it correctly. And this just hurts. These, some of these guys try to wear flak jackets, but usually not at one week. Like, I, I'd be yeah. surprised if he played. In high school, I broke two of my ribs. I fractured two of my ribs. I was playing center field in a baseball game, and the, the left fielder came. We were both going for a ball, and I dove that way, and his knee went right into my oh, yeah. And I, I, I got up and no air was going in or out of my fucking mouth. I just I immediately collapsed. And I remember that ride from the field to the hospital was like the longest two minute fucking car ride of my entire life. And I mean, there was nothing they could do. They were just like, you just have to rest it and sit on it. And I was like, damn, this is like the worst thing I've ever dealt with. It was the only bones I think I've ever broken, but I would not wish that upon my worst enemy. Yeah. Like, so now trying to imagine getting hit across the middle. Yeah, I don't care what flat jacket you're wearing. That hurts, bro. That really hurts. So Emmanuel Sanders, thinking about it right now, sit your ass down for a week, please. I mean, I he, they really need him, even though this matchup. This, I wouldn't be surprised if if the, the if, if Cardinals win this game. I'm I'm telling you, I got a weird feeling about it. Yeah, I, it's all the interdivision games and just shit like that. It's and weird. they gave him a run. They gave him a run last time. The Cardinals have been clicking a little bit. So, but but. Uh, I don't feel good about even if he plays. I have a feeling he's going to leave early or just underperform. So yeah, he knocked me out for like fucking five weeks. I feel like oh, dude, these take Julian Edelman has been on the injury report half the season with these things. Yeah, that's true. so yeah, and him in between him and Kittle, neither are playing this week. If they do, uh, neither are going to be very effective. Okay, let's talk about Tyler Lockett. I know you initially had a 
very serious concerns with him. And all the reports out of there, I mean, when you're taken to the hospital and you have to stay overnight, obviously it's a, it's a very – two nights. It's a very serious injury. Now the reports are coming out that, you know, he's going to be – I'm not going to say he's going to be okay because I don't really know what his status is right now, but that he won't miss a game because they have their bye week coming up this week and then he should be back for – uh, the week following. So why don't you just like break it down the the injury itself, I guess, and, and why yeah. you were so concerned in the first place. So there's only a couple orthopedic injuries. A knee dislocation is one of them. Zach Miller had a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other one is the one Tyreek had where you dislocate uh, the, the clavicle and go down on Sunday. I thought he, I thought he fucked it up. He no, went. I, I heard about it. I didn't see it. I was, I was watching some other game. Yeah, he made a play, and then he went down. He was, he was like riveting in pain, like it was the first time. And I was like, fuck. But he came back, right? And he, he had a monster game. So like five minutes later, yeah, and caught like six more balls. It was ridiculous. The last one that concerns me is what we call compartment syndrome. Inside, you can get it in your quad, you can get it in your forearm, but most common is in your calf. Mm-hmm. So what happens is, if you suffer an acute injury, so we're thinking calf strain, broken leg, anything that causes a lot of swelling in a short period of time. There are small compartments, think of little rooms, in the, in the calf. And each one has a blood vessel, a nerve, and muscles to make it easy. What happens is if you have a lot of swelling in one compartment, you essentially can strangulate the nerve and blood flow of that vessel going that's going to the foot so the problem is you have to if it's serious enough and the the pressure gets so strong in there that you actually have to take a scalpel and run it along the entire fascia it's called the fasciotomy and open up the space to allow the pressure to alleviate get rid of the blood which then allows the blood flow to continue to the foot if not you can lose your foot. You, they have to amputate your foot because you lose blood flow to the foot. The f- tissues start dying. So that's why this was such a big deal. Um, anybody, I had several people comment on my uh, initial post, whatever day that was. Uh, and they said, I've had this before. And this was super scary. And I know it's super scary, but they never confirmed that that's what this was. And they may not, but that's what this was. We saw it happen on the sidelines in hindsight where they said this was a calf strain or contusion that leads to acute swelling. If the swelling is bad enough, it's going to cause that really significant sensation in the calf of pain that is out of proportion to the injury. So it's like, why do I hurt so much? Like I want to chop off my leg hurt like that bad. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you're like, something's wrong. This is not a normal calf strain. This shouldn't hurt this bad. He didn't even stay for the celebration of the win. He was already on the ambulance to the hospital at that point. That's how quickly it happened. 20 minutes, maybe half hour. Um, There's a very good story from in the NHL uh, from Johansson um, that that happened a couple of years ago in the Stanley cup finals. And this happened to him. He said, I had basically the same thing. He wasn't talking about him, but he was talking about his injury. And he said, I suffered it in my leg. I took a shower. By the time of the end of the shower, I couldn't walk out of the shower. It was that fast. And he ended up having to have a massive uh, fasciotomy to relieve the pressure. So thankfully, Lockett didn't have to have this surgery. His pressures came down on their own, and they had to monitor them really closely. So once the pressures go down, you don't worry about it, and and, and then you're fine. But if those pressures stay high, you you stuck. You have to you have to do something in order to um, to alleviate it. So we, he got lucky. I think there is a very good chance he plays in week twelve. Okay, and playing in week twelve, he'll, you, we should expect him to be. Uh, he maybe he's not going to be one hundred percent, but he'll be pretty close. Okay, good to know. That's uh, that would have been a huge hit to most of my fantasy teams. I was kind of terrified when I saw you know he's getting. <laughs> The hospital, I'm like, oh, man, this kid's on the IR for sure for the rest of the year. But It could have. It, it, it could have went very bad very quickly, but it didn't. We got He got lucky. Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of the story of Will Fuller's career. Went very bad very quickly because of his hamstrings. The guy cannot yeah. stay healthy via his hamstrings. He's been limited in practice. He might come back. I mean, like, I, I don't even really know why I'm bringing him up, to be honest with you. Maybe there's deeper leagues. Guys want to throw him in there. 
I, I can't imagine throwing Will Fuller back into my lineup. He's literally had one good game this entire year, and that's all we're kind of thriving off of right now. So I don't know. Do you, do you even want to talk about Will Fuller? Deshaun Jackson, that remind you of someone? The Will Fuller. See, here's the problem. Deshaun Watson, for some people's eyes, has underperformed this year, predominantly because they don't have a deep threat, because Will Fuller hasn't been there and he hasn't been reliable. Kiki Kukate is like – he's on like a milk box cart. And I don't know where he went. He's gone. Kenny Stills hasn't, he's done well, but he hasn't disappeared. Been able to do. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's been, it's been Darren Fells picking up slack. It's been Carlos Hyde in the run game. Yeah. But Watson keeps getting it done via his leg. So he's still, oh, he's doing it, but he, I feel like his ceiling is crazy. And we haven't seen that because Fuller hasn't been there to expose that defense. So they need him. Yeah. There's a chance I don't feel comfortable about starting Fuller. I'll do him in a couple DFS, you know, stacks if I if if that comes to it. But if he if he suits up, but he, he as we saw, he could go absolutely ham, and then or he might get re-injured and he might go to the IR. So it's like those are his two options: yeah. uh, either he does nothing, he gets injured, or he goes nuclear. So I mean, going against they're in Baltimore, and Baltimore's defense has been so good. Oh yeah. Half, so it's like. It's not a matchup I want to touch. It's not a player that I really want to touch. If he plays well in Baltimore, then I'll say, listen, go get him on the wire or something. But he's not someone I'm trying to, you know, break the bank on. He's not someone I'm excited to get into my lineup. On the flip side, D.D. Westbrook returns to practice on Wednesday. He missed week nine. They had their bye. Nick Foles is now the starting quarterback. I know, like, people got really excited about D.D. Westbrook in the beginning of the year. I was never one of those guys. Because in the preseason, there was a game where Nick Foles threw, like, 11 passes. D.D. got, like, eight targets. So people wanted to go nuts on that one small sample size. Then in the regular season, Foles obviously only played in week one. He got about a half worth of pass attempts. And I don't know if any of them went to D.D. Westbrook. So, like, if you want to split hairs and just go off small sample size, there's another reason why you don't do that. But – are you excited about D.D. Westbrook now that Nick Foles is back? Are you, do you think D.D. Westbrook is good to go after this, like, shoulder-neck ordeal that he's been dealing with? Yeah, I'm not worried about his injury at all, really. Uh, and it wasn't even his throwing shoulder. No, I uh, D.D. Westbrook. Oh, I'm saying it, Foles. I'm not worried about Foles okay. in light of – because his injury wasn't on his throwing shoulder. For Westbrook, I feel like he's an integral part of this offense. He is the underneath guy. Uh, I'm not a big fan of his injury. His, I think this is neck more than shoulder. He feels it in his shoulder. But I think he's 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 given it, what, two weeks off? A little over that, maybe, um, with the bye. So I feel like he'll be good. Um, he's one hit, one tweak away from re-injury, and that's just the nature of this. There is a good chance between him, Chark, who I really like, uh, and Conley, who they just – I think they meshed because they go back to their days as Chiefs together. But And, and I feel like – Fournette is due for some positive regression. So I kind of like this, this, this team, this game, and, and, and there's a chance that it may be more high scoring than we thought. It's a weird range of outcomes. If it was 26 to 24, or like 28 to 24, it wouldn't surprise me. But if it was like 16 to 13, it also wouldn't surprise me. So yeah. I don't know. Didi, in my eyes, he's, he's someone that you should feel good about having a floor, but he just doesn't really. Because there are games, you know, you never know who's going to eat in the passing game because Fournette's going to get his 25 touches. DJ Chark has had monster games. Conley's had monster games. Westbrook's had good games too, but it just seems like all of them have really low floors. So I'm not excited to get Westbrook back into my lineup. Maybe someone I'd pick up if he's available and see what he does this week, and then hopefully he'll have better days ahead of him. But probably not someone I'm even really uh, considering in the, in the flex for me, to be honest. We'll move over to the tight ends. we got a couple guys to talk about. I mean, we don't have to go too in-depth on, on Austin Hooper because he's going to be out a month or so. My mm-hmm. question is, if you're an Austin Hooper owner, from your point of view as a doctor, are you holding on to him, I'm assuming, if he comes back for like weeks 15, 16? Oh, I'm not worried about him from a, uh, when he comes back from an injury perspective. I'm more worried, why don't they just IR him and just call it a day? That's what I mean, like the timeline. Like, do you think it's real? It, should you hold on to him? Because is I mean, if you're holding a month for an MCL sprain, you had a very severe grade two. Grade one, he'd be out a week or two at the most. He may even play through it. Grade twos are your ones that you, you – that thing is partially torn – that thing is going to take at least three to four weeks to feel where he can cut and, and, and feel comfortable. I feel like this happens a lot in the NFL. Like someone suffers a somewhat significant injury and the, and the team just kind of like dilly dallies around the terminology and shit. And then 
a week or two later, they'll randomly just end up on the IR. Like, you know, like Cam Newton and all this stuff. It's like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens with Austin Hooper. If you, if you think it's a grade two, like in a week from now, maybe, um, you know, they just put them onto the IR. So. And that's a part, I mean, they're not playing for anything, right? I mean, they're, they, they, you know, they're hot garbage, garbage. They managed to pull out that beautiful win last week, but that doesn't make them any more likely to make the playoffs. So I just feel like they'll get to a point where like, what's the risk? Like, what's the point? Yeah. I have them in a league where I'm like nine and one or eight and two. And that's a big hit obviously, but I'm going to throw him in my IR spot and I'm going to hold on to him because if he does return in, I don't know, a month or no, so. I mean, yeah, that's the only reason that would be only to obviously Donnie Cena are getting rid of him. He's the number one tight end right now, yeah, but um, I, I just have a bad feeling he's going to be done for the year. I, I don't want him to. I want him to come back. Does this help Julio? Does this help Ridley? I mean, do, is, is his backup uh, not Stalker, the other one? I forgot his name. He's a rookie. Who does this help? I mean, because he's been hogging a lot of targets. He's been really good this year. I mean, you want to say it's Calvin Ridley, but like we keep saying it after Muhammad Sanu and haven't seen shit, but it definitely helps Russell Gage. Russell Gage has been very involved in the offense, and he's someone that can get underneath throws. He's someone that can kind of move around the field in the slot. So no Freeman, no Hooper. I actually think Russell Gage is a uh, a good – I would play Gage over D.D. Westbrook this week. I would play Gage over Will Fuller this week. Um, I would I would throw him in my flex. I don't want to say confidently, but I, I would feel okay about it. Yeah. No, I got you. Uh, a couple things that popped up that we really haven't talked about that I, uh, I want to mention. Sure. Uh, David Montgomery may not play this week with an ankle. I saw that. He rolled his ankle at practice, and now they're And he didn't playing. practice today. Yeah, so, that's actually really bad news. What, what I, I wasn't – really up on this information until I think it was yesterday, the day before. So there's an app called fantasy life. Are you aware of this app? That's Matt Berry's app. I think, right? This thing is crack. Is it better than, is it better than sleeper? Cause I have sleeper updates that so, as soon as it happens, like shit. Like so that. this tells me practice reports daily. Interesting. It just texted me saying Montgomery and Trey Burton, neither practice today. Two minutes ago. That was, I, I think that was like a, but that might've been on Twitter already. Like, I feel like I saw that a few hours ago when Sleeper hit me up. No? Well, no, no, because I had good Sleeper too. Okay. Um, all I'm just saying is it, I like it. I, I mean, it's given me good information, and I'm, oh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I can scour Twitter, but I, sometimes I just don't have time to. So, so basically, and we're on there, and you can ask us questions on there if you want, on the fantasy actors, we're in our little chat group, whatever you call it. The other uh, thing I wanted to mention, I'm, I don't think Kittle is going to play this week. This is more of a pain tolerance thing than a structural issue. Um, this hurts though. These really hurt. I remember you, you bringing it up last week. You said this is, this might hurt him for like a very prolonged period. Yeah. yeah this may hurt. Um, and so whenever his pain, whenever he can get his pain under control, he'll be back. But, uh, until, until he, he can get under control and run, he's not, and there's not really much you can do for these. He's got a bad, bad bone bruise, uh, in the top of his, uh, part of his lower leg. Yeah, they like oh, almost so. ruled them. They basically ruled them out, and then they kind and of. They kind of like, ah, but oh, yeah, no, he's out. Ninety-five percent, you're going to say he's yeah. out. What becomes interesting is his backup, Ross Dwelly. This mm-hmm. guy is not an athlete, but his usage. Shout out to FB God for his tweet. Played ninety-one percent of the team snaps last week. Ran thirty-seven routes, which is a very high number for a tight end. Saw seven targets. Now he faces Arizona, who's obviously the friendliest mm-hmm. team to the tight end position. OJ Howard. Kind of flirts his way into the back end tight end one mix as a guy who's going to get a lot of usage. And I would never normally do that. But but if Sanders is out, if Breda is out, if Kittle is out, I mean, Dude, tight end has been so, oh my God, awful. Yeah. When you have a guy that's fucking named Ross Dwelly who runs like a 4 9 1 and you're debating about putting him in as a tight end one, like you got problems. So when you have a guy still ranked as the tight end 14 who hasn't played in six weeks, you have problems. That's Will like, Disley. Sammy Watkins. Pretty sure Sammy Watkins is still like a, t- a top 15 wide receiver because of week one. I mean, like that tells you how crazy, ridiculously bad. Someone was calling me out for saying yesterday saying, why are you playing General Everett? I'm like, he's the tight end 11. Gerald Everett's kind of like a stud, too. If he didn't like, start off slow, he's, he's like week in, week out, wide res- uh, tight end one for sure. I mean, it's like if you're not playing him and you're playing in like a freaking eight-team league, like, yeah. like also, someone I owns Tyler Higby. I think Tyler Higby's going to miss this week's game. So Higby might. Higby might. Uh, I just got a pop-up saying that Gerald Everett should be good to go with a wrist. Yeah, I saw that, too. So Higby's probably going to be out. Brandon Cooks is out again. So Gerald Everett, 
yeah, get him into your lineup for sure. He's a guy who's seeing a tremendous amount of targets. Right, yeah, offense is god awful though. Um, going back to the David Montgomery thing, yeah, I, I'd be very concerned if I was a David Montgomery owner. I'd be more concerned if I was the Chicago Bears because they let go of Mike Davis. Mm-hmm. All I'm seeing right now, I'm trying to look for their actual depth chart. Let me try uh, our last. Kerry Cohen? Is that what it is? Kerry Cohen, but they have to have like another fat back from the practice squad or something. Um, that they, they, can- they I, My guess is they swing some over from the practice squad tomorrow or today. We'll see. I just want to see their – Oh, oh, and another one that I just thought of that, that, that um, it hasn't been talked about. Alshon Jeffrey is probably going to miss this game with an ankle. Really? You think he's going to yeah. miss it? Yeah. He, he hasn't practiced either the past two days. Okay. Um, and, I mean, you remember he's going against the Patriots and, and Stephon Gilmore likely, so that's not exactly the best matchup. But This that, offense is going to look terrible, huh? Their passing offense? Who's when's I mean, and Jordan Howard's banged up with a shoulder. He'll probably play, though. Wow. Um, um, I'm looking at this dude, Ryan Nail. Nall? Okay, so I'm oh, on – N-U-L-L? N-A-L-L. So oh, no, I never heard of him. I'm on OurLads.com, which keeps a pretty good updated depth chart for all the NFL teams. And it's David Montgomery, Terry Cohen, and this guy, Ryan Nall. So I go over to Player Profile, and they have him listed as a tight end on here. <laughs> Our Lads has him listed yeah. as a running back. This guy is 6'2", 235. He's huge. But he runs a 4.58 40-yard dash for that size, which puts him in like the 80th percentile speed score. He's got good burst. He's got good agility. But that is also going off of um, it is also going off of I guess tight end numbers. But he was a guy who caught a lot of passes in college. So I have no idea if this is accurate whatsoever. But Ryan Nall, if we hear David Montgomery's out and you hear the name Ryan Nall, go pick him up in your dynasty leagues because maybe he'll be more involved. I have no idea if he's even fucking running back. I don't, I don't even know what I'm saying at this point, but I'm just putting the numbers together for y'all. A couple other last ones before we go. John Ross is scheduled to be back. I'm not a big fan of their quarterback situation, but yeah, I mean, I mean he's a speedster. Juju's probably dealing with turf toe still, and he's got a great matchup, but I just don't know if I trust him. Who's this? Uh, Juju. Yeah, dude. I, I, and God. then um, the, the last thing that has flown under the radar, at least for, to my knowledge it has, Hollywood Brown hasn't practiced in two days with an ankle. Really? Oh, I didn't yeah. see that. Damn, he was coming on again, too. He would, that's what I'm saying. But he's been dealing with this foot. I don't know if it's the same foot or the same ankle, but this may be another either week out or game time decision. So be careful. Be careful. I mean, Andrews is already the top uh, target share for tight ends over the past month anyway. So He was limited Wednesday, and then he was downgraded, did not practice on Thursday. Yeah, so that's a bad trend. Yeah, that's not good. We'll learn more about it when you guys watch this video later um, on Friday. We'll know more about his availability probably. If he practices, then he might be good to go. If he doesn't practice on Friday, then he's probably not going to play. So that's kind of shite. I believe the Colts tight end, Jack Doyle, is Doyle. some he's sort He's back of, on the field. He's back on the field, return to Colts practice. Okay. Yep. Because not, not not as as I was going to say it would have been a smash spot for Eric Ebron with T.Y. Hilton out and everything. But I guess that's – Nothing we have to be concerned about. Uh, you got any more injuries on the top of mind that you want to hit on? Uh, something's wrong with Saquon. I still know what it is. Yeah, I, I'd be surprised if they don't shut him down. David Johnson looks old as dirt. Bro, David Johnson hasn't been explosive since fucking um, – it's ridiculous. I don't know since, why. they Since his monster season? <laughs> yeah, like six years ago. They, I, I stashed Chase Edmonds because I feel like they're going to throw David Johnson fucking out somewhere. I are, I are him. Damn it, yeah. IR him, please. I think they're going to IR him. I don't know. Whatever. That Arizona backfield is just. So, it's so a la- last funny comment that you'll appreciate. If anybody checks out my uh, daily injury report, it's basically a big spreadsheet of all the injuries, and I update it daily. There is the second column. It says, ideal return to play. Um, and next to David Johnson's name, it says, never. <laughs> no, if you catch it, if you read it, they usually comment on it. If you don't actually pay attention, then it doesn't. It's not funny to you. But no, no, that um, is pretty funny. I, I look at that. I look at that weekly. Uh, I didn't look at it like in. I don't look at the some of those like in depth. If I know Dave Johnson's like going to play, I won't look at the return. But that's <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. So like, and then uh, on the bottom, I have uh, the bye week, and I list them. I have it as the New, New Jersey Gi- Giants because uh, they just lost. Um, so so they're no longer the Kings of New York. I mean, they play in New Jersey anyways. We need a fucking. <laughs> Man. They gotta, they gotta give Jersey back something. All we have is the Devils, and they're fucking trash. I don't follow hockey, but I'm assuming they're still trash. <laughs> all right, we're gonna take off. That's all we got for today. Make sure that you are following both of us on Twitter. Make sure that you subscribe to our channels if you are new. We'll have all of their social media, the Fancy Doctors, as well as Doctor Morse, 
Um, link in the description down below. Hit that thumbs up button if you all enjoyed today's video and subscribe to, again, both of our channels. So that's it for today. We'll see you all next Thursday. Peace. Yeah.